So this is more of my OCG binder. I have the three Kingdom cards that uh, were printed um, by Konami in Japan. They came from the Pegasus structure deck. Um, they're really cool. It's just uh, too bad they didn't make the other two. And they finally made them in English a few years ago, which is awesome. They actually look good as ultra rares. Um, I just have them odd because it's a cool card with Millennium items and stuff. Duelist ID card was um, something given away. Um, actually, it was a card you had to put your name on for an early tournament. And same thing with this in 2004. This was previous. I actually know someone who had to write their name in here, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> Duelist ID card. Um, these cards here are part of a video game series. Um, that was in, I think, just one, some early Game Boy game or something. And over here is supposed to be Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, um, Siaru, and I think there's one other in another deck I have, but these are really cool because all the original cards, um, were ultra rares, and in this type of, uh, boxing, which was, uh, the norm back then, um, until they printed cards like, you know, like this, uh, later on, I think in, um, well, after they finished the volume series, and they even went up to, um, oh gee, Phronic Guardian, I believe, their version of that, um, let's see, so there's a Harpy's Feather Duster, the one from the show, um, J Japanese show, in the dub that's different. Uh, the cards look different and all that. Salamandra. The original Crush card. Now that is pretty cool. Bright Castle or Shine Palace. Kunai Chain. And Acid Trap Hole. These were from a video game, just like there. But the thing is, sometimes they had two cards, or four cards, and we got three, usually, in every single one. And one, sometimes there's even one card. It's very, it, it was very different. Um, so we know what these ones are. And I went over some of those already <clears throat> in another video. So I'm just going to jump into Premium Pack 1. Um, so this Premium Pack was actually given away um, in an actual pack at the Tokyo Dome. And they probably had spillover and gave them away in another hosted tournament by Konami. They didn't have too many hosted tournaments, um, only at the beginning, in Japan. So there's a Secret Time Wizard, which is, again, Secret Rare is essentially an ethereal card, which um, in the media, Time Wizard basically counts as um, a, a magic card, pretty much. Just like in Bandai. Uh, it's a magic card. Exodia. And again, some of these were printed in the McDonald's pack as well. For the English. Ultra rare Exodia pieces. They were printed in... I actually have better condition ones, but I think they're behind some of these. Um, they were printed in the volume series, so it was you actually had to collect Exodia in different sets back then. Kind of fun. Maybe. It sounds kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> Secret Rare from uh, Phantom God. That is basically the Legend of Blue Eyes, but split into two. Because every Japanese pack um, takes an English one, basically, and divides it in two. Whereas we got one combined set instead of two. This is Premium Pack 2. This one was for Rituals. I actually have Black Luster Soldier and the Ritual. Uh, as you can see, these are ultra. Pretty cool. Premium Pack 3. Now these are unique because they started doing parallel rares. If you can see. So there's a regular print, and then the parallel are print of all these cards. Mm -hmm. 
premium pack four begins with this. Um, there is a magic cylinder, but it's in another deck. So this is the first time they printed Dark Magician Girl. Um, originally, I think it was uh, in a, a very rare secret rare or something like that. I don't exactly remember, but that's why it says replica here. So this pack was kind of hot back then because you got Dark Magician Girl for the first time being mass produced. And premium pack five, uh, red eyes, different art, was new. This set had a lot of alternate art cards from the original um, promos and volume series. Harpy's Feather Duster is in here. These also have um, parallel rare cards as well. So like there you can see. Kunawa Chain, Acid Trap Hole, Metal Morph, Red Eyes, Widespread Ruin. And so there's two arts in Japanese. There's this one and then the one that shows the destruction. Millennium Shield as well. And I ended with Premium Pack 6. That was the last one I remember buying in, in Newberry Comics before they almost phased out the Japanese pack entirely, which is too bad. So I got this before um, every, everyone knew about it in the TCG. <laughs> so I showed someone I knew, and I said, oh, here, take a look at these. And he's like, oh, so you know what's coming out. <laughs> he said something else after that, too. But I don't know if I can say it on YouTube. Uh, it was a funny moment. This is um, Dark Ceremony. It's basically Premium Pack 2 again, but with more rituals. These ones aren't worth much at all. So there's also a Fortress Whale. And I'll go over a little bit more. So here's the, the G4 series and such, um, the game series. They were basically the equivalent of us getting Skull Dice and such in Eternal Duel of Soul. So Panther Warrior, Burfo Matt. Chimera. Dunamis Dark Witch. Pretty cool. Secret rare. Here's the widespread ruin. The Magnet Warriors. Uh, and for some reason, Gamma is in another series, which is on the next page. Some of these are from the original starter box, and um, Back then, they gave them away um, in some big pack with like a, a VHS and another card similar. This Flame Swordsman is also from that time as well. Oh, no, that's actually Legend, Legend of Blue Eyes. There's another Flame Swordsman without that. And then the original God cards when they first were released, G4 and all that. And then we just keep going. Um, it's always cool to get cards in a video game. I think this Force Raider is the Parallel Rare. I don't remember. And then they also printed Secrets as well as Ultras. Again, we got that for Eternal Duel of Soul. This False Goth. So they got all this stuff. And it was relatively cheap. But this False Goth was a Shonen Jump card here, which, of course, when it came out, it was um, expensive. I don't even remember two grand or something when it came out. Five God Dragon, Dragon Master Knight, and one version of Satellite Cannon. There's a ton. This is another series called the Value Books. Value, what's it called? Valuable Book Series. It's just something else they made for one of their little Yu-Gi-Oh booklets. Black Illusion Ritual, the Ultra Rare, which is cool. Pfizer Des, which in the show, uh, there was no Plasma Eel. It was three Pfizer Des, I believe, and, and Merrick used machine duplication on this monster to get three of them. Legendary Fiend was an ultra rare when it came out. Let's see here. Yep, and then these are just more so other cards that are similar. First print, first print. This card, such a pain. Kazuki uh, Takahashi Sensei did not want them to alter this card in any way. And of course, um, even though they're making the lost art cards now, they're still they still haven't found an agreement yet 
to print this card in English because of certain reasons. An original Regeki from the first volume series. Same thing with that. Now this is something, you know, it's also sad that these also weren't worth much pre-pandemic, but this was still expensive, I think 50 bucks or something. But I saved up for that at the time. An Ultimate Rare BLS, Blackluster Soldier, Ritual, sorry. Five God Dragon, Ultimate BLS. It's funny because no one really knew about any of this until the pandemic began and people started researching <clears throat> and then buying and then now there's nothing. Ultimate Rares, Ultimate Rares. More Ultimate Rares. Yep. That was from um, a two-in-one um, box with Structure Deck Merrick and Structure Deck Kaiba 2. Alright, so I'll end this video there with the promos. Thank you for watching, and I'll have more soon.